Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. A very interesting morning. Now let's see what the papers have for us. We're starting with the Nigerian Tribune uh, this morning. And uh, of course we'll be uh, introducing our guest uh, right after this. Um, the Tribune Tribune is from just a few minutes, or a few seconds rather. Yeah, It says there, Rivers got 4.7 billion Naira out of 15 billion Naira VAT. Kano received same 2.8 billion Naira generated. Wiki reveals, laments injustice. Wiki's VAT battle puts Nigeria's federalism on trial, experts and lawyers speak. It also says states' uh, VAT management will cause confusion, and that's from the FIRS. Why VAT law will be beneficial to Lagos, says the Speaker Obasa. Still on the Nigerian Tribune, establishment of farm estates, Greek gifts of fatal Trojan horses, says Afenifere. Thieves snatch Igboho's AIDS case files, DSS tells court. Slams terrorism charges against them. Former governors may produce uh, next PDP national chairman. Also on the Tribune, in Kogi State, EFCC now tool of oppression and opposition parties, or rather, now tool of oppression, opposition parties tell Buhari. Why ex Governor Darier's 93 year old father was killed after collecting 10 million naira ransom, and that's by the abductors. Zamfara government intercepts food and fuel supply to bandits, arrests 100 suspects. Those are the big stories on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Let's uh, take a look at the Punch newspaper VAT collection row. WK talks tough on the Punch newspaper. Lagos defends Bill as FIRS writes National Assembly. Rivers orders firms to begin payment. FIRS letter won't stop us, says Lagos. Rivers generated 15 billion naira, got 4.7 billion naira. Kano made 2.8 billion naira, got same. That's according to Wiki. Hmm. Nigeria records 1.87 trillion naira trade deficit amid rising crude, rising crude export. NMA, NARD blame Ingige for prolonged strike. NDLA seizes 6 billion naira drug linked to Middle East criminal gangs. Afeni Ferry says Buhari's 108 farm estates had his settlements in disguise. 5G networks in sight as federal government approves policy. Rwani says GDP rising, inflation falling, yet poverty worsening. And still on the front page of the Punch newspaper, we can see a picture there of people clad in black. And uh, it's captioned, Rivers pensioners lament colleagues' death, protest non-payment of nine-year gratuities. Still on the Punch newspaper, Igboho's aide sue DSS for defamation, rights violation, demand a hundred million naira. Gunmen abducts three of Bassinger's workers in Ogun State. Kogi, 20 billion naira. Parties accuse EFCC of political agenda. Passengers strangle Lagos doctor turned Uber driver, steal car. Families throng Lagos Cemetery as fallen tree breaks graves and lastly on the punch newspaper buhari's visit police warn troublemakers masob seeks kano's release all right now let's see what we can find on the daily independent newspapers federal government to boost economy open opportunities with 5g says security agencies requested shutdown of telecoms in zamfara and stakeholders say nigeria will derive socioeconomic benefits from 5g Mietiala making decisions for Nigeria, says the Benue state government. Declare state of emergency on health and education, PFN tells federal government. And we've commenced implementation of uh, value-added tax in rivers, says Governor Wiki. And of course, uh, why VAT law will bene be beneficial to Lagos, Obasa is saying. Federal government files terrorism charges against two of Igboho's aides. And NPC consolidates on gains, publishes 2020 audited financial statements. And we are not against Buhari's visits to Imo, says Ohaneze. Um, finally, let's look at the Guardian newspaper. The story about VAT is still a big deal here. Uh, the Guardian reads, manufacturers deplore stalemate as FIRS rivers insist on VAT collection. FIRS says we have backing of VAT Act. Rivers meets business community, begins implementation. Bickering as Lagos proposes 6% VAT, 75% for state councils, 25%.
Manufacturers worry about impasse despite 44.9 billion naira remittance. What's in Digbo will tell Buhari in Oweri today by Ohanezi, Masob Igbo leaders. Okorocha says, no big deal. Buhari visited Imo three times under my watch. Hurua reacts as government reopens banks after shutdown over Monday sit at home. NNPC consolidates gains, publishes audited financials. Uwoko's lawyers fought NGF on Paris Club refunds. Uwoso slams EFCC over face-off with Kogi governor. Akira Delu vows to deal with open grazing offenders. And lastly, October convention sacrosanct. PDB governors insist. Let's now say good morning to our guest, Mr. Ezekiel Iyaitok, a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Mr. Iyaitok. Good morning, ever happy to be on Plus TV Africa. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, um, which other stories would you start with? The VAT story is um, it's predominant in virtually all the papers, and it's very important. And um, we need to look at the VAT story beyond the surface. What is VAT? How do you get about it? What's the role of the government? And at the end of the day, what do you gain by your present method? VAT, to the best of my knowledge, is consumption tax. And for you to be able to get a certain level of collection, you need to bring your state to those areas, hospitality and stuff, that will encourage a lot of people to consume this product and you get the VAT from it. It's different from oil that you say is in the ground. It's something that the government have to do. Now, when you get that money, you take it into the pool and give it to everybody. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. So as a result, you what what is there as an incentive for a man who doesn't encourage such things to be able to go on with them for instance a very typical example is um you know the states that are <coughs> against alcohol this is an argument that we made over and over and over and people don't seem to listen to it i think that consumption of alcohol is bad no problem i'm down with it now you cannot it's like, let me use a very crude word, and um, if this will drive it home. It's like a parent who tells the daughter, don't go sleeping around with men. It's not right. It's not okay. It's morally wrong. You're a church girl. You shouldn't do that. And yet in the evening, you call and say, um, that month, that uh, yesterday you went out, where is the money you got? You, you send conflicting signals to the person. And the question is, is it really bad for me to go out or you want to satisfy your religious propensity against me while at the same time enjoying the benefits of what you speak against? It's something we really need to look at in, with respect to morality. And secondly, the more um, serious implication is, why would I sit down and collect the money that is being um, cultivated by another governor. This is not like oil. Another governor knows he needs internally generated revenue. He cuts certain industries. They buy to it, which is not illegal. As a result, he gets some resources. Now you take those resources and give to another man who is just waiting on the wings to collect it, it doesn't add up. It's injustice. Okay. Why would rivers generate 15 billion and get less than one third, which should be at least five? They get four point something. What is the incentive for the other man in state X that generates next to nothing and yet collects from state B that generates this? This is not federalism. Okay, it doesn't make sense. Mr. Yaitok, um, on the Nigerian Tribune, they describe this as putting, you know, um, Nigeria's federalism on trial. And I, I want to understand that the reason why they say so is because there's been lots of clamor for devolution of powers and federalism where each state controls their own resources, you know, IGR and, and the rest, you know. So 
we're saying now that in this case of VAT collection by state, it means that states will be able to collect IGR and that it basically seems to be paving a way for more states to be independent regarding how they generate and you know, manage their resources. So would you indeed say from that perspective that this row over VAT collection is putting uh, federalism on trial in the country? It, it definitely is because we need to ask ourselves what sort of system we run. There's so much conflicting signals all over this country. Are we running federalism or unitary government? We need to be very clear on what we want. If we want unitary government, let's say that that's what we want. If we want federalism, everybody knows what federalism is. We have federating units that are relatively autonomous Okay, but then certain infrastructure are, are generic, are general, and they go through everybody. So as a result, you know, they have to like bring certain things into the pool, like the military, you know, so that that is what federalism is. Federalism is not I generate money, I share with you, my brother. It doesn't make sense. If federalism is each person developing at their own pace, and it brings about competition. You've got, if you know that you cannot be, you know, let me tell you, see, everybody is running around now to, you know, I listened to your conversation, which was very instructive, and I really followed everything that you were saying. You want to be governor. How many people have sat down to interrogate why each person wants to be a governor? Why do you want to be a governor? What is your plan on generating revenue? What is your core objectives, and who have you been? You know, all this, uh, I'm sorry, I would not so much align with you in that discussion because, you see, when we go around doing what we think will impress the people, we betray the essence of leadership. Leadership is what we know will improve the people. That's why you're called a leader. That's why you're brought in. You don't do what I want done in that context. Your, you, your son wants sweet. You know that. He wants sweet. Give me sweet. Give me sweet. But as an elder, you know that he will have dental caries. So you say, boy, you cannot have sweet all the time. You want sweet, but I can't give you sweet because your future is at stake. I know better. A leader is a man who has the capacity to lead. That means you have a vision. You have a direction. You have what you want to where you want to take your, your people from one place to the other. Going around and wanting to say grassroots politics will we'll buy the minds of the people, but you betray your calling as a leader. You're not a leader. Yeah. That's well, why... Uh, Mr. I talk. my point, um, once again, is has it worked? Has it continued to work for the average Nigerian you politician? You my point. You missed my point. It has worked in giving them the office. But exactly. It has not and, and that's, that's the point the that I was... That's the no, point that I was no, simply no. making. I wasn't saying as, that that is the right thing to do. Person, as a media person, mm -hmm. you must never advocate what betrays the essence. Never. That's my thinking. I may be wrong. Yeah. My, must, once again, my point is it is yes. not necessarily the right thing to do, but the Nigerian mm. politician knows that it works, and that's why mm. they've continued to do mm. it. So until we get to a stage where we can elevate the type of campaigns that we run, we, until we get to yes. a place where our campaigns are better and you can actually yes. sell yourself as a leader, like you've said, until we yeah. get there, that's what they're going yeah. to continue to do. So what and I want to appeal point. to you, what I want to appeal to you, a personal appeal, is please don't encourage those who do that by bringing their narrative. If anything, say that is wrong. That will not progress us. That's what you do. I'm happy for you, but that is wrong. All right. That well, people need to come to a point of saying that is wrong. That's absolutely. why we're today. Absolutely. But once again, once oh. again, it has continued to work, and that's why they keep doing it. And that's simply the point that I'm making. I'm not saying it and is right wrong. or that's the way that it should be, um, or that's the way politics should be done. But it it, it it has worked for them, and that's why they continue to do it. All right. And Just another that, thing is, not that um, it is wrong, and it doesn't. Just but but another wrong. thing, Mr. Airtalk. It doesn't also stop him from also carrying out his politics or his campaign the right way. There is the grassroots way, and then there is the way that you also want it. You I, know, I've contested governorship twice. Yeah, I'm aware. Anyway, and, let, let's, and let's move on to something else. Again. Yes. Let, let's move on. Let, let's talk about way. the... Uh, apologies. Let's talk about the DSS um, 
and the case file of Igbo's um, associates that apparently got stolen in uh, one chance in Abuja. Yes, the Tribune, the Tribune coins it this way. It said thieves snatched Igbo's AIDS case file. That's what the DSS is telling the court. Okay, um, thieves. Um, a man who snatches could be a thief, but a man who steals might not snatch. So those two words make me wonder what happened. Because if they say thieves stole, it could have been that while they were in the office, okay? Okay, let me, let me clarify that for you, Mr. Yaitok. Um, the DSS yeah. um, counsel, um, his name is Mr. Owo, he went on to say that um, one of you know the colleagues of the council of the DSS as well went on to um, convey this case file that was containing the human rights application by 12 of Ibuhu's aides, and that while he was conveying that, their vehicle was attacked by one chance criminals who stole the case file, or because we've seen varying sides of the story, or that this DSS operative entered a one chance vehicle and then these criminals went ahead to steal the case file. <laughs> when you have an important case, how you convey your document tells the premium you pay on it. So I really don't think that um, it's something I... Uh, it's, it's, it's of national import to the extent that you ask yourself, how do DSS operate on such a sensitive matter where everybody know it was a national, it was not like um, taking Rudolph Soro to, to, to court on criminal charges or things like, or fraudulent things. They were it charged on terrorism, case. in fact. Sorry? They were charged on terrorism, in fact. That's why I'm saying a case that important. This narrative you are giving me just shows um, something the nation would rather not hear. They probably should have just said that the, the case file is missing or something. Because if you interrogate the process, it means that a case as important as terrorism is not treated with the level of sensitivity, level of care that it deserves. That's why you can enter one chance. It means the person was convey, conveying it by private means or things like that. I really don't understand. For me, it just doesn't add up. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's move on now to another story um, on the Daily Independent. And it's about um, um, this particular one where um, Mieti Allah is saying that, uh, I beg your pardon, the Benue State Governor is saying that Mieti Allah is making decisions for Nigerians. And this is really talking about um, cattle breeding, cattle grazing. So would you say that, um, according to the narrative that we've seen from the president, it's seeming like a Benue State versus FG or it, is, or it should be um, the federal government versus the issue, which is the cattle grazing and all the conflicts that has spurned from that. For a case as sensitive as this, this is probably one of the most sensitive cases. As a matter of fact, terrorism that we are, this is what the, uh, the, the, the head span issues that we're talking about. If you listen to Meitiala, not even Meitiala, some, some, some leaders from the north, they say that the cattle of these breeders were being rustled and sold to other people. Now, these um, cattle rearers, having no more cattle to sell, find it easy to be conscripted into this act of, you know, banditry and the rest. Mm. So the foundation seems to be that some people came from somewhere and started rustling the cattle of these people who were just ordinary cattle rearers. And on account of them losing their means of livelihood and to survive, they were brought into something that they even found to be a lot more lucrative. What am I trying to bring out? For this matter that has turned out to be one of the worst national nightmares, and when you look at a chapter I could never quote enough, chapter 2, section 14, subsection 2b, that says that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. Now we are 
about the third, one of the top three most terrorized nations in the world. And then the federal government is allowing the narrative for this conversation to be driven by Meite Allah. It just doesn't add up. Mr. Can you can you link yeah. that? Can you link that to a statement by a Ferry? It's on the Punch newspaper that the yes. president the president's one hundred and eight farm estates is heard as settlements in disguise. The president is just fixated on this issue of land for headers, land for headers, land for headers. I believe that Nigerian headers have the right to live. I believe that Nigerian haters have the right to good life and to ply their trade in the best possible way. I believe that Nigerian haters, I'm very, very careful to underline that. To that extent, what is so difficult? Look, this 30%, you know, PIA, you know, uh, for Frontier Basin Development Exploration, I think that if there's to be a poll, not less than 80 to 90 percent of Nigerians will say, stay hold on the frontier basins, take this money for the next one, two, three, four, five years, and pump 90, if not 100 percent, into developing Sambisa forest, an awesome amount of land, put all the infrastructure necessary, and let the headers have a place they can ply their trade and benefit their children and also be able to give their children education, stable environment, and apply their trade. I believe that nothing less than 80 to 90% of Nigerians will support that. But instead of that, we are deploying this money into things I don't understand, number one. Number two, we are wasting a major resource that we have by way of land in Sambisa Forest. Number three, we are having all manner of clashes and misunderstandings with Nigerians on account of land. These things are no rocket science. Why don't you just carry one stone and kill all the birds? Take this money, develop Sambisa Forest, first class ranches and state of the art infrastructure and Art. let these people ply their trade, grab their cattle, and make money and have children. As a result, Nigeria wins, the cattle rivers win, and the security. What's so difficult in doing that? Right, Please Mr. tell Ayato. me. Um, okay, let's uh, close up with uh, talking about the controversy concerning the president's visit to Imo State. Uh, it's on the uh, Daily Independent um, uh, bottom right, and it says, uh, uh, Buhari, or rather, we're not against Buhari's visit to Imo, and that is from Waneze. Um, to quickly respond to that, you know, because there apparently was, you know, another sit-at-home order by the IPOB on Thursday, and of course saying that the president was not welcome. Number one is that IPOB and every Nigerian must understand that the president is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And to that extent, he has the right to go to any and every part of this state, even local government, he has that right. Nigerians must understand that IPOB too. Number two, the president must understand that he is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and that the IPOB are his children. They, he has every right. I believe that he should be tactful enough not to go there to dare them, but he should be going there to say, look, you are my children. I feel you. And this is what I'm thinking. He should go there to be to such that by the time he leaves, he would have taken the wind off their sail by addressing the issues that even reasonable people will say, IPOB, I don't like how you are doing this, but trust me, your reason for this is germane. I believe that if Mr. President has very strategic advisors, good advisors, his going there will do him more good than harm. But if he just goes there to dare the people, it's like people who already have their backs against the wall, and he, he goes there to give a body language that shows him having no, no, no interest in them, I think it will end up doing more harm. But right. the president should be wise enough, smart enough to take the wind off their sail, and it's very doable, very easy. Okay, we'll see how to, uh, today turns out. Um, 
I'm sure that there would be feedback from the Southeast and from Imo State to see how, you know, people actually, you know, either obeyed or, or you know, came out on a Thursday. Thank you very much, Ezekiel Nyaitok, for your time this morning. Thank you. Wish you a beautiful Thanks day. for having me. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. you. All right, stay with us. Uh, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, our next conversation is going to be on urban development and fiscal planning here in Lagos State. And we'll be joined by, uh, you know, uh, an in-studio guest. So stay with us. Don't go anywhere.